All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call to order uh, the Bella Vista City Council meeting for uh, December 13th of 2021. Uh, you will probably have noticed uh, pretty immediately that I uh, am not the Mayor Pete Peter Christie, but I am Doug Fowler, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Peter uh, got in touch with me early this morning, and uh, evidently he has some pretty severe uh, pain taking place in his neck that's affecting the movement of his head and his shoulders. So he asked if I would... Uh, sit in and uh, run the meeting tonight and I said I would certainly be happy to. I certainly uh, may not be as smooth as he is as he does it. Uh, he's been doing it what for the last seven years now but I think if we'll uh, all kind of all stick together uh, we'll get through this just fine. So with that uh, I'd like to ask you to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. We'll do a roll call of council. Council Member Wozniak? Here. Flynn? Here. Fowler? Here. Burke? Present. Wilms? Here. Snow? Here. All present. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, citizen input. Uh, please be advised that uh, each uh, resident is limited to three minutes. Uh, council will reply once uh, everyone has spoken, and uh, this is uh, going to be limited to comments for the city council members, and it's not a discussion period. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you will come when you come forward, please state your name, uh, your, your address, and your topic. Uh, we'll start with uh, Kevin Dooley. Good evening, everyone. Um, Kevin Dooley, 122 Lester Drive. I recently attended the Freedom of Information Symposium in Little Rock. And while I was there, I got a couple hundred of these FLIA workbooks. I have enough for everyone on the council, everyone who works for the city, everyone who's in the gallery, so please feel free to take as many as you want. I have an entire box and I don't need all of them, so thank you. All right, all right, thank, thank you. you. Okay, uh, Jan Hoffner. Good evening. My name is Jan Hoffner, and I live at 7 Fairway Drive in Brittany Courts, where we have reached a saturation point of non-owner occupants and investor owners. This includes both casual and professional landlords. As an owner occupant, I want to speak about the short and long-term effects of this situation. I want to thank Jerry Snow for listening to these concerns and for encouraging me to share them tonight, and I want to thank you for your time. Number one, non-owner occupied properties are less likely to be maintained, despite existing city or POA rules. This includes failure to paint exteriors, even if bare wood is apparent. Profit drives decisions about home improvements for these investor owners. In townhomes that share a common wall, like mine, the presence of mold, lack of pest control, or lack of termite inspections, frozen pipes, or the lack of a working smoke alarm would certainly affect all attached units. Furthermore, the failure of the investor owner to respond in a timely or appropriate manner affects all of the attached units. Property issues are less likely to be reported to the owner for repair or maintenance since the tenants may be there for as little as a weekend. Number two, short and long-term tenants of non-owner occupied properties are less likely to know or to adhere to the existing city or POA rules. This is evidenced by unleashed dogs bicycles and dogs on the golf course, what vehicles are present, and where they are parked, etc., etc. Number three, 
<coughs> excuse me, investor ownership increases neighborhood exposure to crime. There is an impression that the unit is empty, evidenced by trash cans sitting outside of the garage all week long that are not put out for pickup from week to week. The driveways and the walks are unkept and unswept. Burned out street lights are not being reported for replacement. There are fewer owner occupants to notice and to report any unusual activity or crimes in progress. Number four, investor ownership results in increased noise in the neighborhood. This is even more likely if there are no occupancy limits set by the owner, such as on a short-term rental. Most renters bring multiple vehicles. If a property doesn't allow pets, the short-term renter will keep them in the garage, resulting in excessive okay. sorry, <laughs> resulting in excessive noise from barking. Excessive noise on decks by short-term issues is another issue. Now, these people are coming on vacation, if you will, and <coughs> kind of have the vacation mindset, I okay, would say. Uh, J Jan, mm -hmm. you've reached, reached your three minutes, or are you oh. just about through all your points? I am just about through. Okay, okay we'll, I'll go we'll, fast. We'll wrap it up quick, If that's all right with you guys. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just okay. wrap it up quick. Investor please. ownership results in reduced participation and involvement that might otherwise be found in a neighborhood. There is an unwillingness of tenants to be involved because it is temporary residence. Number six, Bella Vista's national reputation will be affected. Excessive numbers of non-owner occupied properties on a street will result long term in lack of owner support for improvements to the city or the POA since their interests are in profits rather than enhancing or promoting Bella Vista's image, infrastructure, fire and law enforcement agencies, schools, etc. These are specific concerns, just four, three of them to short-term renters. In Bella Vista, short-term rentals are substituting for a traditional hotel, but they are not regulated in any way. Zoning and occupancy standards and safety inspection, inspection should be implemented. Contributions to local economy by short-term rentals are limited. For example, lodgers are less likely to patronize restaurants and say have access to a kitchen. Lodgers who utilize our amenities are not significantly contributing to the local economy. And last, as more short-term rental, I'm sorry, as more short-term, <coughs> excuse me, short-term units become available to lodging customers, there are potentially fewer housing units available to owner-occupied homes in Bella Vista. I believe that long-term this will affect our community's stability and our growth. In closing, it seems appropriate to address these issues. Uh, a cap on the percentage of these owners per street and per neighborhood would be beneficial for Bella Vista. Thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone replied, Larry? Uh, Ms. Hefner? Yes. Could, could we ask you to send a copy of that to our city clerk and he could distribute it to the council okay. members so that we would have a full benefit of your comments tonight? Okay. I left one with, Ms. with Mr. Here. Snow. Do you have mm -hmm. a copy? Yeah, I got a copy. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're, I can leave my copy. We're That's good. all right. Oh, that was all right. Fine. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Because I, I, I'm going to respond if, if we're done with the rest of the council. Um, yeah, Jan, I'd just like for you to know, uh, and other residents of the city, uh, we realize and understand that this is, a, you know, a topic of conversation with many residents, you know, across Bella Vista, and we know uh, that it's an issue. And it's, some, it's an issue we don't want, want to blow up on us. And we, we're addressing it uh, as you speak tonight. Uh, we've already had, just, just FYI, we've already had uh, two meetings uh, in moving forward on writing a short-term rental ordinance. Uh, just so you know, you, you, it, it takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of time. There are a lot of different points to think through. Uh, you know, there are many different short-term rental ordinances across the United States, and uh, they're mostly crafted for, you know, each individual city based upon, you know, how uh, they're assembled, I guess maybe you would say. But we are working on it. I uh, spent two hours um, last Wednesday or Thursday, I have another meeting scheduled for uh, January, 
So I guess the net of it is we're working diligently to put something together and address the, address the situation. <coughs> Okay, man, I, I apologize, but we're this, we're, this isn't, yeah. we can't have a discussion, but I just wanted to let you know that we're working on it, okay? All right, thank you, all right, thank you very much. Okay, that's all. That's it. All right, moving along. Um, approval of minutes. Has everyone had the chance to read the minutes? Uh, anyone have any concerns, changes that they'd like to address? Move to be approved. All right. Uh, <laughs> Jerry Snow, uh, second. Moved, Jerry Snow moved uh, to approve, and John Flynn to second. Okay, roll call vote. Councilmember Snow. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Burke. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Carey. Six zero. Okay, uh, monthly financial reports for September of uh, 2021. Uh, they were distributed earlier today. I hope everyone had a chance to look through them. Does anyone uh, have any comments, any feedback? John? Uh, the only comment I have is I noticed both this, and there's been some talk about this in the past. Happily, the uh, both the city income tax and the county, uh, or city sales tax and county sales tax is up almost 20%. Both of them are almost 20%. Uh, Verse uh, 2020, verse 2021. Okay. Yeah, just a couple of comments from me. Uh, I had a chance to, you know, to go through it today. First, uh, to Karen, our new director of finance. Uh, yeah. Pardon me? Yeah. Kim. Oh, Kim. I'm sorry, Kim. <laughs> um, thanks for adding the, uh, uh, the city and the county breakdown. I appreciate it because uh, I think that's something a couple of us were going to address and ask that you do, and you did it on, and, and we appreciate that. Um, you added the uh, county effect of uh, our percentage being lowered, you know, to what we're going to be receiving, you know, to, from 11.9 to 10.6 percent, you know, to kind of help us see what that's going to mean to us. And as, as quickly as Northwest Arkansas is growing in revenue, uh, it appears that it, it still could affect us significantly on a month-to-month -month basis from what I saw. It could be fifty dollars to $100,000, and that's really important to know as we look forward. Uh, and you added uh, turn back fee collections that have taken place so far year to date. And uh, over the three months we've been collecting, we're, we're about at $100,000 right now. So that's not an insignificant amount of money. I appreciate that view because we, we talked about all those things uh, at the Monday work session last week. Uh, just in general, uh, for residents of the city to know, our general revenue is up uh, about $2 million year to date versus prior year. And that's across about, across about every measure. That's not just attributed to sales tax from the city and the state, but it's uh, ambulance revenue, uh, property taxes, et cetera. So, uh, you know, so we have a real, he real healthy taxes coming in to help us uh, fund our city. And our expenditures so far year to date, we're about $1.1 million a year to date un under budget. And I excluded uh, the capital projects from that because, you know, that's kind of a moving target. We don't really know where that's going to land. More than likely, we'll probably be under budget on that as well because we probably won't spend everything. But the net of it is uh, we're in a very healthy position uh, as far as the city is concerned financially. Okay, uh, I would like to entertain a motion to suspend the rules uh, and read all proposed ordinance and resolutions on the agenda by title only. Do we need to approve the financial report? No. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion. So moved. Second. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Flynn moved to approved and uh, Larry the second. Yep. Okay, roll call vote. Councilmember Flynn? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Burke? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Snow? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Terry? 6 zero. Okay, we're moving on to old business. This will be the second reading of uh, an ordinance approving the vacation of drainage easement at 2 Reardon Road pursuant to section 107-37 of the Bella Vista Code upon conditions. Um, I don't know if we have, need to have any discussion about this, uh, but upon the applicant has, has a responsibility for uh, turning some paperback work, paperwork back into the city, um, addressing the specifics of what it is that they are requesting to be done. 
and we thought that would be done, that would have been submitted before now, and it hasn't uh, shown up yet. So we're simply, unless somebody has any questions about the vacation, uh, we're going to simply move this to the third and final uh, during the month of January. Larry? I guess the only comment I have is I'd, I'd like the minutes for tonight to show that when we discussed this at our last meeting, the um, uh, agent from uh, Kraft & Tall who was here to represent Barry Williams from Kraft & Tall was here to represent the work on the project and the easement documents. Um, he explained that the reason that we need to do the new easement and vacate the old one was because when Casey's site was developed, uh, they failed to uh, prepare the appropriate utility easement for drainage because of the pipe they installed at that time. Um, so it was a lack of oversight by the city in essence uh, for not catching that or not in, in identifying that and requiring that an additional new easement be prepared to address um, the actual location of the physical pipe that was installed. So we're trying to catch up on something that happened many years ago. Okay, anyone else? All right, uh, moving on to new business. Resolution 2021 resolution, R2021 resolution, is in there a couple times. Adopting a city budget for the city of Bella Vista for the calendar year 2022, appropriating money for each item of expenditure and for other purposes. Um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start uh, before I open up the floor. I'd just like to give a very general overview, very quick, down and dirty. So uh, as far as the uh, general operating expenditures, we're expecting revenue uh, for 2022 to be in the range of uh, $17.5 million. Our general operating expenditures were expected to be about $17.2 million. So uh, we're expecting revenues around $300,000 uh, greater than what our operating expenses are going to be uh, to date. Uh, just from a personal perspective, I think probably our revenue projections might be a little low versus what we will actually realize. Uh, I think it's probably prudent in today's environment to be a little bit cautious. Uh, first of all, we have the county uh, uh, contribution for Bella Vista that has been taken down. I know that's going to impact our revenue from a county perspective. And then, just kind of state of economy, but just because of the inflation, inflation that's taken place, et cetera, you never know what's going to uh, unfold in front of you, and you certainly don't want to lean out too far over your skis and expect that revenue is going to come in that, in fact, may not. So that's general operating expenditures. Um, our street fund revenue, uh, we're projecting about $3 million uh, into the city for, uh, uh, for 2022. Uh, with expenditures of $3.9 million. And so uh, that's an underfund of about $938,000. But this is something that we experience every year. And generally what happens with uh, these, these shortfalls and expenditures for the, expenditures for the street department is we, we fund that from our general revenue. Typically, uh, we, we fund our city, you know, 100%, assuming, you know, um, all departments are going to stay uh, full, full of headcount, uh, that they're going to spend everything they projected that they're going to on operating expenses. Uh, the five years uh, since I've been here, that has not happened yet. So we generally have, you know, an overage of, of revenue versus expenditures every year. And on another note, even if that would not happen, uh, we have a pretty healthy reserve. So we're always able to fund uh, that, that street fund sufficiently. And I think the residents of Bella Vista, I think for a majority, really appreciate the state of our streets uh, and uh, how the city has been able to uh, improve and maintain them. Um, just a couple notes as far as uh, highlights, if you will. For 2022, uh, our city, you know, of course, the help of our uh, HR director, uh, we, did, we, we experienced uh, no medical insurance increases. Uh, dental insurance was no cre no increase either. Uh, workman's compensation we did have an increase at twenty seven thousand dollars there, and our de debt service actually decreased from three hundred fifty five thousand dollars to ninety eight thousand due to a payoff of uh, equipment loan. 
And I'm not going to give any numbers because uh, I don't think anybody would probably want to retain them anyway. But just kind of, just for what it's worth, uh, fire continues to uh, be the greatest expense to the residents of Bella Vista. But I'll say it's a very outstanding fire department. If uh, I've never watched them actually on a fire myself, but I have watched them uh, at a residence, and my next door neighbor had to call on them for help. And uh, neighbor called me first, and then I came over, and I was able to watch uh, our EMTs, our ambulance service, and it was quite outstanding. I was really impressed. So our emergency services in Bella Vista, I think, are next to none. Uh, the police department is our number two expenditure. Once again, very professional, very well staffed, very well equipped, and uh, I'm really glad they're here. Uh, our third greatest expense is our community development uh, department. And uh, I work with these, these people quite often. As a matter of fact, I'm working with them right now on the short-term rental ordinance. And uh, I got to say that the department, that we have some outstanding people there. So those are our three largest departments that we have to fund uh, every year. Um, so again, that was just a quick overview from me. If anyone uh, has any comments as to the city budget that's been proposed or any objections, any changes they'd like to, to make, now's the time to do it. Mr. Fowler. to approve. <clears throat> Mr. Fowler. Well, oh, I, I, I just would add also that uh, all of this is a matter of the public record, and I, I agree completely with uh, your summary of it, and I, I thought you did a great job kind of uh, hitting the high points. But if somebody is uh, interested in the details of it, they can approach City Hall and can get a copy of our budget. It's all part of the public record, so every detail is available uh, should somebody be so interested. Okay, duly noted. Motion to approve again. Second. All right, we got a motion to approve by uh, Mr. Wozniak and a second by Mr. Wilms. All right, <clears throat> roll call vote. Council Member Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, our third item on the agenda tonight. Resolution authorizing budgetary funding transfers between departments in the 2021 annual city budget. Um, you know, this is just a, uh, a resolution that we have to approve every year in case we have to transfer funds between different departments so everything can balance out and we can close the books. Uh, typically, we really don't have to do anything. Uh, this year, we might have one item that we have to address and from what I understand, the library, the HVAC system went down, and we are going to need to replace that. And the cost estimate on that is about 26 k So uh, we may have to do something, you know, in, in the form of moving some money around this year. But other than that, I'm not aware of uh, anything else. Uh, so that's it on that. If anybody, again, has any questions or comments, Ms. Snow? Um, I was under the impression the... Uh the library building and everything was uh, still owned by the um, foundation. Is that not correct? It, it is. It is. And uh, part of our lease agreement requires us to do all maintenance and okay. upkeep. Okay. So that, that burden falls to us to take care of that. Mm, good. Understand. <laughs> motion okay. to approve. Second. Mr. Wozniak made the motion to approve. Mr. Williams, second. We'll call vote again. Council Member Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, so just briefly before me next meetings and announcements. I would just say, as I was driving over here this evening, I'd like to comment on what a beautiful night yeah. it is. The skies are crystal clear. Mm -hmm. It is 49 degrees. Venus is on the horizon. <laughs> the Christmas lights can be seen all through the, the defoliaged trees. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you for, to everyone that puts the Christmas lights up for the enjoyment of the residents at large. It was just a really, really nice night to be thankful and grateful for being a resident of Bella Vista. Agreed. Sure. Second. <laughs> well, second then, yes, then? Larry. Uh, real quick, Larry. Yeah. Uh, we're done, right? Yes. Well, I got a meeting as an announcement. So I have to read. But if, <clears> okay. I've got a couple of things. It, there, okay. 
Uh, one, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Jeff Wetzel and his staff at B. List Burgers. Uh, over Thanksgiving, they, along with the Knights of Columbus, which is a fraternal organization of St. Bernard's Church, uh, delivered uh, dinners to uh, uh, veterans at that time. Um, the second thing is I'd like to acknowledge and thank the Bella Vista Community Church for their commitment for improving residential and our, our, our residents' exposure and opportunities to enjoy local group performances. Um, they supported um, the Bell Vista community uh, has a concert band and they performed at the Bell Vista Community Church on Saturday. Uh, the Bell Vista Men's Chorus uh, performed there on Sunday afternoon allowing entertainment and exposure to some culture by our members and residents. Uh, good concert on both parts. I'd like to thank all of them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Larry. Very appropriate. Okay, meetings and announcements. The next City Council work session will be Tuesday, January the 18th at 5.30 p.m. in the Bella Vista courtroom. The next regular meeting of the City Council will be Monday, December the 20th. Whoa, that's a uh, wrong date there. January. January the 24th, 20, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. in the Bella Vista courtroom. Planning Commission work session will be, again, this, uh, yeah, December 30th. Right. Is that so right? The work session has been canceled with Planning Commission. They canceled that, so oh. December 30th will not be taken. Okay, so there will be no Planning Commission work session on December the 30th of 2021. Uh, Planning Commission regular meeting, so the work session was not rescheduled. They're just going to have no, a work session. Gonna... Okay. Planning Commission uh, regular meeting will be January the 10th, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. in the courtroom. And the Board of Construction Appeals will be January 11th, 2022, if needed. With that, I'm going to adjourn uh, City Council meeting for December, and we look forward to seeing everyone in uh, January 2022. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Could we not have a little sing along or jingle bells or something? We could. Go right ahead. Go no ahead, Jerry. Stop you. Well, no, well everybody, everybody, everybody join in with us. No, no, no. You're suggesting start it. Go for yeah, it. I'll get it. Jingle bells. Yeah, boy, keep going.